As you start to work with curved surfaces, it's important to understand smoothing and softening. Here I have a decagon with some additional subdivisions on the top surface. I'm going to select these three edges here by holding down the Shift key. Notice up here in Entity Info that we have checkboxes for soft and smooth. They're separate things. Softened edges are hidden. Smooth surfaces blend their normals together, which is a trick that's been used in computer graphics since the beginning to give you the illusion that we have a curved surface here because the surface normals, which point perpendicular to each surface, are all blended together, giving you this nice and smooth illusion. So now it looks a lot more like a cylinder in this area. If you look at the edge, the illusion is sort of blown because we can see this faceting here. But at least in the body of the object, it looks like a perfect cylinder. If we want to get those edges back, we can do it manually by viewing the hidden geometry, and then by selecting them individually, and unchecking these things. Another approach is to use an option of the Eraser tool. Press E for Eraser, and then hold down the Option key on the Mac, and drag over these edges. You'll soften and smooth them simultaneously. I'm going to turn off the view of hidden geometry so we don't see these dashed lines. You'll find that it's not possible to select those individual edges anymore because they're smoothed. If we want to get them back, we can use another option of the eraser tool. Hold down Shift Option and then drag over this area and that will unsmooth and unsoften those edges. There's a subtle but important difference between hiding and softening edges. If I hide these edges by going to the Edit menu and choosing Hide, or by pressing the H key with my shortcuts, the edges are no longer visible, and so it looks just like they're softened. However, I can still push and pull these surfaces. If I unhide, the edges reappear. However, if I soften the edges by using the Entity Info dialog box, and checking here, the edges disappear, but I can no longer push and pull, because SketchUp thinks of this as a curved surface. I'll just recover these edges by holding down Shift Option with the Eraser tool, and then I'll select everything by triple clicking. Go to the Window menu and open the Soften Edges window. This is a strange dialog box because of the way that these two checkboxes function very differently. Soften Coplanar is a toggle, and Smooth Normals is really just an option related to this slider. If I check Soften Coplanar, then all of these edges up here on this flat surface are softened. And I can toggle it off or on as I need to. Smooth Normals doesn't seem to do anything. And that's because, as I said, it's just an option for this slider. So when it's unchecked, the slider will just affect the softening. If I drag this to the right, the edges will be softened. You can never soften the profile edges that form the silhouette of an object. What we're referring to here are all of the internal edges. So when this is a lower number, the edges will reappear. If I check Smooth Normals, it will soften and smooth at the same time. So this dialog box is great because it affects the entire object it saves you time. You don't have to go in with the eraser tool and do this manually. Soften and smooth edges is more of a global approach to dealing with this important concept. There's a Ruby script called Joint Push Pull, written by Fredo, available in the Ruby Library Depot. Joint Push Pull goes beyond the regular push pull tool in SketchUp and gives us the ability to push-pull curved surfaces. In other words, surfaces that have been softened or smoothed. So take this familiar situation where we have two surfaces that meet in an angle, and they have an internal edge between them. I'll select this edge, soften and smooth it in Entity Info. You've already learned that in a situation like this, the push-pull tool will not work. So let's select the surface and use the Joint Push-Pull tool on this toolbar. Click a point to start the operation, move the cursor up and click another point. We have an opportunity now to set the distance accurately. I'll say 3 feet and press return. 
Press return once more to complete the operation. And there you have it. A surface that's been pushed up and extruded, even though it's a curved surface. Undo. This time I'm going to create a vector line going up in the blue direction. Right now it's completely vertical. I'm going to move it over at some arbitrary angle here. So it's going off like that. Then I'll select the surface and use the vector push-pull tool. I'll start down here, move up, and this time I'll type in a distance of 4 feet. There we have it. An extrusion that goes along a chosen vector. We can undo within the tool using this button right here. I'll delete that vector line, select the surface again, and then use this final option, which allows you to push-pull in the surface normal direction. That is, along a line perpendicular to each surface. This is similar to doing a manual push-pull on a surface that is not softened. And we have the same kind of internal edge problem that you would have using the regular push-pull tool. But there you have it, three powerful tools for pushing and pulling curved surfaces.